Well, like I told the guys in the locker room, it's hard to win college football games. And so we, you know, definitely feel good about uh, having come through in the, in the end and, and winning the game. Um, it also revealed and exposed a lot of things that uh, we really need to, to work on. And so the feeling in the locker room afterwards was pretty subdued, um, which, which I appreciate because, you know, for us, it's not just about winning and, hey, you know, you got the W, move on. We want to play well. You know, we want to want to be at our best, and that that's what our ultimate goal is: is to be our best. So, so we definitely things to work on. Didn't expect perfection. Knew that they were going to be a really good team, and they were. Um, and so we knew it was going to be a battle. We just you know thought we would have done a little bit better in some areas. Coach, could you talk about the defensive impact of Blake Bogan? He had a big interception for you guys to stifle their first drive, and he was the guy that recovered their onside kick. He was wearing the zero. Could you talk about his play and what he's meant to this defense? Yeah, uh, you know, <clears throat> Blake means a ton to this program. He's a six-year senior from Grand Blank, and uh, we're really excited when we got him and knew that he was really going to develop into a great safety. Uh, played a lot of wide receiver at Grand Blank. Um, he is just rock solid uh, in, in his character and who he is and has just – tremendous respect from everybody uh, in our program. And he got the first zero, you know, um, which is a big deal in our program. Coach Nethery and the defensive staff gave that out to him on, on uh, our Thursday evening uh, mock game. Um, and, you know, that interception, you know, arguably won the game. I mean, we were anemic offensively. We had six plays in the first quarter, you know, went nowhere backwards on five out of the first six. Uh, and that takeaway in the end zone basically stalled them, you know, from being able to score and, and for us to get our junk together, you know, offensively. So huge play in the game. And then obviously the, um, you know, he's our, our guy on the hands team and, you know, the, he, he made a great play. Could you talk about the emergence of Darius Lassiter, how he's worked himself into the rotation? He had four catches for you guys on Saturday. He had four catches, but I'll tell you, he's, he's not smiling. Because um, there's a couple that that got away from him, uh, he has really emerged. Uh, I think probably at the wide receiver position, outside of the guys who played a ton, you know, in camp, he he was the talk. Um, he's got really good hands. Um, he's really picked picked up on what we're doing and how we do it, um, and and very reliable. And and he also brings an element that you know the other guys. Um, you know, don't have as much in terms of his length, um, his ability. And, and the other guys can win in one-on-ones into the boundary, but he's a little bit of that longer, bigger guy with uh, uh, normally super sure hands. Could you talk about Tomasek? He was named Mac Player of the Week for the West and, and the performance he gave you on Saturday, uh, punted three times, averaged 42 yards a punt. Yeah, I just heard that. So congratulations uh, to Mitchell and, and to the whole punt team. Uh, first college start, first uh, play, um, not just start. First one I think he'd, he'd like to have back. I mean, it went 39, but then kicked back, you know, five or six more yards. Uh, then he really crushed one of our directional punts with 49 yards right on the sideline. Didn't turn it over, but still, you know, a non-A ball for him going 49 yards and, and perfectly placed uh, was a tremendous punt. And then the pooch. Um, you know, I think it was on the three yard line, uh, you know, which was, uh, you know, a tremendous first pooch punt for him. So, you know, I've said all along that we have a group of punters, you know, that were brought in who were who here and who we brought in, you know, this June to compete to try to replace who's quickly becoming a legend. Um, and uh, we're off to a good start. I was happy as an old school guy to see a coffin kick. It doesn't seem like that's a strategy much anymore. Guys trying to punt it down the middle and down it, but he placed it beautifully down in the corner down there. He did. Tanner Tanner was trying to catch it. I mean, so it could have been a little bit of both. You don't want to depend on the bounce of the ball to take it out of bounds or anything like that. Um, and so, yeah, it, it was just – it was really well done um, and uh, big play in the game. Now you go down to Louisiana, it's going to be hot, it's going to be humid, it's going to be a hostile environment. 
as you talk about your team feeling subdued after that, that W, what do you feel are the areas that you really need to progress this next week to go down and take care of business at Louisiana? Well, we will have to play at a really high level. Um, you know, a level, a level that we're capable of playing at, but nonetheless, we'll have to have to play really well. I mean, that program is, you know, quickly turned into a, a juggernaut, you know, just have uh, dominated the Sun Belt, which is a really good, um, a really good conference. And yes, there's been some changes, but then as there's been changes, sort of more stuff stays the same, you know. Um, and and uh, they've got really good players. They're they're very well coached, and uh, you know they're they believe in what they're who they are and how they do it. They're confident. Um, they're used to winning. So, you know, we're, we're going to have to tackle better defensively. You know, we didn't like our third down conversion ratio um, in the game defensively. Uh, you know, and then offensively, you know, we felt as though we got the run game going and. Um, uh, didn't have really is explosive, explosive runs, um, you know, and our pass game was efficient. Uh, but we're, we're going to get some different looks um, out of Louisiana. So I think that the game, you know, could could have a, a different feel both offensively and defensively. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Coach, a couple of guys that you had listed as starters last week didn't play. Uh, starter Richard Baines and uh, corner uh, Kenton Shine. And I was just wondering, you know, what the deal is with them and if they're going to be missing out. We don't have a Richard Baines. Oh, Bates. Uh, he'll be, uh, he's good to go. And so is Kempton. Yep. Uh, and in their place, you know, they had a couple of guys who just started Demetri Douglas and Joshua Scott. Uh, they're not from Royal State. So that center, Demetri Douglas, you know, what did you see out of him? I thought, I, the only time I really noticed him was when he got really fired up when he thought he had the, a free play going against EKU, but it didn't go his way. Um, you know, what did you see out of the, your new center last week? Well, first, he had a, a very good camp, you know. Dimitri's from Saline High School. We offered him out of out of high school. Uh, took a scholarship at Michigan State, um, and ended up being back in our program and has been uh, competing, getting better. Uh, had a really good camp. He's playing the best football that he's played uh, since his time here at Eastern Michigan. And he didn't just get here, um, and so uh, you know, could very well see both Dimitri and Richard uh, this week. But yeah, so Dimitri really came through for us. Um, and you know, with the graduation of Mike Van Hoven, um, we knew that there was gonna be somebody new, you know, at center and and Dimitri has definitely thrown his, his hat in the ring. Yeah, uh, what kind of signs do you see out of like your receiver room? Obviously we talked about Lester a little bit, but even the starters, they all perform Haas had a great catch, Tanner he had a couple of catches, uh, Dylan Drummond he led the day and targets and catches, you know, what what did you see out of your starting unit from receiver on Friday? Yeah, I mean, they weren't perfect, but, <clears throat> you know, we think that those guys are fantastic football players, leaders in our program, um, great people. <clears throat> and I think that they, you know, we, we threw the wall 31 times, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and we were efficient. You know, we were really efficient. And those guys ran good routes and, and found the seams and the holes, and, um, and, uh, and Taylor put it on them. Uh, so... Those guys, uh, we think, are are really good players, and we're going to continue to to lean on them. You'd asked about Josh Scott too. We didn't get back to him, so you know he was a junior college transfer. He's from California. He got here in January, and we've liked him all the way through, and um, have been trying to get him ready to play, you know, on on Saturdays or Friday nights, and uh, so he got his first taste, and and uh, is going to just even get better and better. Coach, uh, Rob Rubik's on the line as well. I know he's got a couple of questions for you. Rob? Yeah, I, I would say that from week one to week two, you really have the opportunity for the greatest improvement. It doesn't happen uh, just magically um, or, or even naturally. And I think that's a, I think that can nip people in the, in the butt, you know? So you, you gotta make, our guys from Friday night and then our meeting on Sunday, you know, we just know 
there's individual things or sides of the ball. There's team things that, that uh, we have to get better at. I mean, football is blocking and tackling, right? And so because of the way that we practice to try to keep people healthy and, and fresh and whatnot, our defense gets very, very limited opportunities to actually tackle um, because we're, we're just taking, you know, uh, calculated risks whenever we do that. And so it's not that we're not blocking offensively, but, you know, when it's not fully live, when a quarterback is, you know, wearing an orange jersey, um, you know, it's, it's just different. And so part of it, you know, I think for every team is just going from one from playing football in week one to, to week two. Um, but, you know, we, uh, we, we were a little bit conservative, um, more so than, than we would like to be uh, defensively. And again, our, you know, our third down conversion ratio defensively is something that uh, has to get better. Um, we didn't get the pressure on their quarterback, who uh, we think you know, is a really good player, um, has really good feet. Uh, but we didn't get the pressure that, that we wanted to get on, get on him. Again, offensively, um, you know, after an eight-month buildup and it's your first play of the game and, um, you know, we have a, a zero-yard uh, gain, um, just got a little uh, not confused, but just a read didn't go the way we wanted it to and ended up being kind of a busted play on the first play of the game. And so then we have two series, again, where – there was just no rhythm and, and uh, just trying to settle our guys down. I mean, Eastern Kentucky did a lot of different things um, in and out of multiple different fronts and bringing pressure, you know, all the time and in lots of different ways and multiple coverages. And so we just had to settle down some and um, got into a rhythm. But we, you know, we need to be able to have a, a fast start. Um, and, and we certainly didn't have that uh, offensively. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, it's a, it's a really good question. I mean, they do have some new pieces, you know. Um, and so we just have the one game to figure that out. Um, and that's, that's, you know, we're obviously spending time on that. Um, but I, I do, I, I think that their confidence, their aura, um, you know, will have a lot to do with it. You know, they, they believe that they're going to win when they play. Um, and there's a lot to be said for that. Uh, they, they can... They can rush the football. Um, they have backs that run behind their pads and are, are just, you know, they, they run angry. They're, they're uh, super talented. And their quarterback was 16 of 19, right? And they've got a, a really good group of, of receivers that um, are explosive and, and, and guys that are dynamite and quick and, and scattish. And then you've got, you know, some long guys who might be long striders, but who can go get it and stretch the field. And so uh, they're, they're very well-rounded in that way. And obviously you don't run the ball and go 16 for 19 if you don't have a, a good offensive line. So, um, you know, defensively, um, they, they did a, a number on Southeast Louisiana. Um, they're, uh, they, they are, they run to the ball uh, extremely well. Um, they do. Their their uh, their back end is very talented. Um, uh, they can really run. Um, high level of skill. They've got an interior player on their defensive line who's been a multiple year starter and all, all conference in the Sun Belt. Who who's their leader um, up front, in my opinion. And and uh, he's a handful. I mean, he's a really good player. Um, and then a returning linebacker. Um, you know, in, in number six, who's, you know, 240 pounds and, and really runs. And they just, they get after you. They know their scheme. And um, it seems like it's been adjusted a little bit since last year. Um, but they, they play with confidence uh, in that defense. Uh, they really run to the ball. Coach, before we bring Dylan up, uh, thoughts on, on his ability? He's a, a, certainly a senior that's made a large impact in your program. but. 
He's also a guy that has, has currently got the third longest FBS streak in the country of active receptions throughout his career. What has he meant to your program, in person, personally and on the field? Yeah, I mean, I, I remember very distinctly uh, recruiting uh, Dylan Drummond and just knew that we wanted him in our program. I just thought that it was like, this guy is exactly who we want on and off the field. And um, I remember he went up to a Northwestern showcase. I wasn't there, but you know, the Northwestern coaches grabbed him and all that. And I mean, our coaches, the orders were to like, you know, guard him with knives, machetes and rocks, whatever you needed to do. But um, so, you know, it's always a battle with someone like that and a lot of connections in the Mid-America Conference. And then, you know, he, he had two catches, I think, in his very first game, his freshman year. Um, and it just wasn't surprising. I mean, we played him as a true freshman. And he's just never looked back. Um, he's so good at knowing his skill set, knowing our offense. Um, his route running ability is, is fantastic. And then he just, you know, um, very rarely drops the ball. Um, <clears throat> may have had one the other night. But uh, um, yeah, and, and just the person he is. I mean, I just remember his home visit with, uh, with his family um, and just first class uh, people. Um, you know, he's the guy that you just want recruits and families, you know, to, to be around uh, because you want your, you know, program to emulate him and, and for him hopefully to, you know, represent our program. So can't uh, speak highly enough about him and, and who he is and his future. Uh, he is A plus. Perfect. So here he is. Dylan, first of all, could you talk about the offense's performance on Friday night, how you guys felt about it when it was all said and done? Um, yeah, so like Coach hit on already, we kind of got out of the gates a little slow, um, a lot slower than we'd like to, obviously. But one thing about this offense is we know how good we can be, and uh, we expect to be really good. So coming out slow is um, you know, something that um, wasn't ideal, but you saw what we were able to do to bounce back, come back, and uh, start moving the ball and scoring points um, to help our defense out, who really had saved us in that first quarter. Uh, Dylan, what was that switch that flipped after you guys went free and out your first two series? Did you guys find your rhythm and start putting drives together? Like I said, like uh, we, we know how good we can be. So when we get to that sideline after a couple bad drives, um, we can look at each other and say, hey, let's go. We know what we can do. So we got to go out there and do it. And I think that just speaks to the leadership and uh, the leaders on our offense, um, like our quarterback, Taylor Powell. And uh, I think like the, 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 the sky's the limit for this offense, honestly. What's led to your consistency as a wide receiver to produce regularly on a constant basis? Um, I'd just say, honestly, I'd say personally, just, just my love for the game of football. Um, I don't think it's, it's too, not too hard to be consistent when you, when you love what you're doing. So I think that's, that's what I can say about that. There's a player I was curious about. Uh, you're headed down the right sideline. It ends up as a touchdown for Bay Dune, but you and him kind of ended up in the same area. And actually, two of you fighting over a defender for the football. What, what happened on that play? Um, it's funny, actually. I got a lot of uh, messages and texts uh, asking me how, why I let Haas take that touchdown from me. <laughs> but I don't think they know the story that um, I get, we, got, we got a mixed signal. So it was a little miscommunication. It was um, supposed to be a vertical from number two, and we ran double vertical. So I was actually in his, his area. So that was my fault, but I'm glad he got it. But you talk about the signaling too, there was one too. It's been interesting to watch you guys develop, but how you guys are able to take advantage of the defense. The play I'm thinking of is Powell sends a hand signal to Canoe. Canoe, this guy off him and runs it out and it results in a touchdown play. Um, what's the communication been like with Powell? Do you guys feel you're all pretty in tune even after one week? Absolutely. Um, our offense is extremely smart. Everybody out there um, knows the game really well, especially Taylor. Um, 
and that's going to give us like a, a really really big advantage on defenses. That I think three of I think there was three passing touchdowns, and I think each one of them was check by Taylor to to take advantage of what we see, um, and that right there is, is winning football, and I think that's that's going to be huge throughout the season. Thank you. Yeah. Louisiana District, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to the environment. Um, not quite looking forward to the heat, but it'll, I'll, I'll deal. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. They're a really good football program. i um, been winning a lot of games for a long time, and I know it's going to be a very awesome atmosphere and a really cool environment. Uh, if you kind of talked about how, uh, how Powell, you know, how he was so smart and like got you guys the three touchdowns the way he did, but and he's also versatile like with his feet too. Like from your advantage, like how is his smarts helping out with him on the run game? Um, yeah, so he's obviously a very smart quarterback and um, not the fastest guy in the world, but like any, like any guy in the football field, like knowing your limits and knowing what you can do is, is going to get you as far as you need to go. So he's really smart about when he's running the ball and where he's going with the ball. So when he makes that decision to pull, it's usually the right decision and he's going to get the job done. Well, I got you. Could you talk to about uh, Lassiter? He's a guy like you know we expect plays from you and Canoe and and Bay Dune and that, but Lassiter able to make his four first catches as, a, as an Eastern Michigan Eagle. Yeah, Darius is a he's an extremely talented wide receiver, and um, he really showed that over camp. Um, he's a really great addition to the room. We have a really talented receiver room, even outside of um, the four you just mentioned, but he is extremely talented and, and he's just going to keep improving and I can I can see it in the way he is and he's very smart and he's going to be a really good football player here. Is this the best receiving core since you've been at Eastern Michigan? Yes sir, absolutely.